Mailbag time here on the Cleveland Browns Report. I answer the questions that you guys ask during our live show every Thursday at 4 o'clock Central, 5 o'clock Eastern. So tune in on a future Thursday to get your question asked and answered. Levi Mayfield is up to bat first. Could we use Jakeem as a rotational in the slot, as a guy in the slot, as long as he's healthy? Here's the thing. Jakeem Grant is a bit older. I think he's around 30 years old. He's coming off a torn Achilles. Like, he was signed as a special team return man, coming off an Achilles injury. He not just restructured his contract. He took less money. I'm guessing the Browns said, hey, take some less money, and you can compete in training camp for a 53-man roster spot. As of right now, with the Marquise Goodwin signing, I don't see a spot for him on the 53-man roster unless he can completely put that Achilles injury behind him, which when you're a bit older, that's tougher to do. I don't think he's going to have that spring, and if he doesn't have that, I don't know what he can offer this team. So I don't see him being on the Browns roster, unfortunately. Really bummer, really bummed about that because I liked the signing a lot last year. What's going on, Scarehouse Tim Zombie? With Joe Thomas going to the Hall of Fame, what other Browns players do you believe deserve to be in as well? Okay, I like it. Kind of opening up the history book a little bit here. Um, we talk Clay Matthews. Uh, I'm just thinking like the last like 15 or so years. Unfortunately, there's not a long list of Hall of Fame worthy players. I'm going to go with Matthews for now. And that is, I think, where I'm going to end. Older Browns fans are going to do a lot better job of answering this question for me. But, I, I, yeah, pencil me in for Clay Matthews. Oh, we got someone uh, from the Guardians right now getting ready for their matchup against Seattle. Could the Browns trade Jedrick Wills to get a higher draft pick? Hmm, I've seen some people actually comment similar thoughts. Uh, poison pill for one. So let's talk about Jed Wills just as a whole right now. Has he been a first-round type talent through three seasons? No, he has not. He has not been a first-round left tackle. Has he been unplayable? I don't think so. The ankle injuries definitely nagged him the first year or two, but since then he's definitely start to put that behind him, but still not all the way there. Now, Jedrick Wills' fifth-year option, it costs $14.1 million. I think the Browns are going to pick that up, but I wouldn't be shocked if Andrew Barry goes, you know what? I think the better recipe for our roster is trading Jed Wills, drafting an offensive lineman, signing a cheap tackle, sticking him at left tackle for a season, and getting that draft pick and using that at a different spot because we don't see a long-term future with Jed Wills after year five if they pick it up. So let me know. Would you pick up Jed Wills' fifth-year option? I think it will get picked up. Should it get picked up? That's a fair argument to make going both ways. Having a player as a left tackle under you know a rookie contract for five years is tempting, but he doesn't look like a $14 million left tackle, if we're being honest about it. But the Browns might be forced to just do what's best for their options currently, and that could be picking up Jed Wills' fifth year. AFX Apocalypse, what are the odds that we could get Zadarius Smith if the Vikings ever release him? We got a Vikings producer right now, Patrick Seatman. That would be a pretty fun signing for the Browns, I think. Patrick, you want to unmute yourself and kind of just give the dog pound your take for 30 seconds? Yeah, Zedarius was great last year. He kind of tailed off at the end. But I will say, I expect the Vikes to try to trade him. But honestly, a fifth, sixth, or seventh could probably get it done. Yeah, I just think the Browns are probably kind of feeling comfortable where they at at the edge spot after signing Oboe. Like, you don't sign a player like Oboe and Karanko just to have a bunch of his snaps taken away. Right, you want to see him grow into a role where he can be the opposite side of Miles Garrett. Not go get a veteran guy for one season and just sort of push down on Oboe's growth with the Browns. So I don't think it's very likely AFX. Joshua Miller, what's going on? Draft Izzy, and I'm going to leave it there. Dude is an under-the-radar stud from University of Pittsburgh. Insurance for if Chubb leaves after 2023. I do think the Browns are going to draft a running back. Which running back that is? When you're talking about drafting you know, running backs in day three, it's a crapshoot. It's anyone's guess. There's really no inkling or signs pointing to one guy. So whether it's Izzy, whether it's Kendra Miller, 
uh, whether it's McIntosh from Georgia. There are a lot of good options, and I do think the Browns should take a running back with just Nick, Ch- excuse me, Nick Chubb and Jerome Ford as the real two backs on this team. Tossing John Kelly, sure. I think adding another player to be in the wings to potentially take over from Chubb and start gaining some valuable reps and experience now would be helpful. Now, we are trying to reach 19,000 subscribers by the time the draft rolls around. We're less than 800 subs away. Let's reach that goal before the NFL draft gets started. Help support and grow our local Cleveland Browns YouTube channel here at Chat Sports by hitting that sub button. Lil Beam next up on the show. If I'm being truthful, I don't want Hunt back. I want to see Ford develop because I think he could be an amazing running back. Uh, Lil Beam is quietly saying the quiet part out loud, okay? I do want to see Jerome Ford in a larger capacity this year. One, we all loved him in the preseason last year. Two, when he did touch the football last year after the ankle injury against the Falcons, he was great in kick returns. Let's see what he can do as a RB2 under this system. And if Nick Chubb is not going to be here after 2024, I'd like to probably have his replacement on the roster this year or next year at the latest. So, Jerome Ford, it's your time to shine, buddy. TLH Arts and Projects, good to see you in the chat. If we had to get any offensive player that is still available in free agency, who would you choose? Good question, because we always spend so much time talking about the defense. Um... Any player on the offensive side, it would probably have to be an offensive lineman. I just think you're good at wide receiver. Running back, you know, Jarek McKinnon, if you're not going the Kareem Hunt route, that could be an interesting idea. I know I just said it's Jerome Ford season, but the guy scored 10 touchdowns last year. You got to at least consider it a little bit here. That would probably be the only spot. Look for a swing tackle, although I like James Hudson. So maybe a six man on the interior offensive line. Um, I don't know backup guards and centers all that well, but that could be a position of need. When will it end? Any chance the Browns trade up in the draft? Okay, interesting. So let's first look at what the picks the Browns have in the 2023 NFL draft. They got two-thirds, two-fourths, and two-fifths. Someone asked me on Twitter the other day, hey, what would it take to get to pick 50 and get a guy like Jack Campbell out of Iowa? If you took pick 74, pick 98, And probably pick 126. No, make it 142. Two-thirds in that earlier fifth, that could get you to mid to late round two. The issue is I don't think they're going to be going that direction. If anything, they could be moving back some picks, right? From 74 to like 82. Why? Because look at Cleveland's 2024 draft picks right now. They've got a second and a third. That's it for rounds one through four. I think Andrew Barry will be more reliant on the draft next year than free agency. And if so, he's going to want some more picks than a second and a third as far as the first four rounds of the draft go. So you could see him move back, pick up an additional third, somehow get a comp pick for like a fourth or something. And then you're kind of at where you are right now where you go, no first still, but a second, two thirds, and a fourth. That's a, you know, a a good amount of assets you can fill out a roster with if you're the Browns. So let me know, who would you trade up to draft, right? Would you want to move up and get someone like Keanu Benton, right? If he's still on the board, late second round, early third round from Wisconsin, a defensive lineman. Give me a name of someone who you're like, man, when the Browns were picking at 42, I wanted this guy. Now that they're not, if he starts to slip a little bit, Andrew Barry has to pick up the phone and get him if he gets past pick 50. Joshua Miller, Keanu Benton. Wow, that's very weird. Is is being mocked all over the draft, late first all the way down to the fourth round. If he falls to third round and we should, if he falls to the third round, we should pounce. Yeah, Keanu Benton, a four-year starter for Wisconsin. He is a very good run-stopping player who does have some upside and pass rush as well. But I'm looking for run stoppers, something the Browns have not been able to get with their last three defensive tackles picked, going in order Elliott, Togiai, and Winfrey. Benton hopefully could put an end to that run and be a legitimate stop run-stopping defensive tackle. And who knows, maybe when Dalvin Tomlinson's contract gets towards the end, 
Benton could be ready to step up and be that next run stopper for Cleveland. Brian, what's going on? Are you concerned with the amazing friendship Chubb has with Kareem Hunt? How will Chubb react with him gone? They say he is the only one Chubb actually talks to. Chubb is definitely a silent leader in this locker room. I remember Stefanski in an interview saying, like, if he could get Chubb to say anything, that would be a thousand more words than he ever said. Something to that tune. So, I mean, there is something to the personal side of the NFL. We always talk about players as stats. They are human beings, too, and they have values in the locker room. So I don't know what Kareem Hunt's value is in the locker room. None of us do unless you're in the locker room. But it's a business. Teams are not going to make moves for friendships. They're going to expect professionals to be professionals and go find a way to get your job done without having your buddy next to you. But, yeah, it definitely stings a little bit if teams are cutthroat and move on from guys. But I think Chubb could understand if Barry's like, we're doing what's best for the team. We're sorry. We're sorry. We can't just bring everyone's pal along with them when we think they're past their prime. Last question coming in from Jake Heath. Petey, who is your tank uh, tank team for this season? Good question, Jake. I kind of like that, talking NFL. Um, tank team for this season. Who's going to have the first pick in the draft, Patrick, you think? Um, man, the Panthers. Uh, Texans are really bad, too. It, uh, it's probably going to be really this between the Panthers, no, not the Panthers, between the Colts, the Cardinals, and the Raiders. Whichever those three, the Falcons, whichever those four teams has the worst quarterback play, they'll be picking first in the NFL draft next year. I'll go with one of those four teams right there. But if I'm really going to pick one, I'll go with the Colts. I think Indy could be awful next season, kind of like that one year without Peyton Manning. Appreciate all the questions we got on today's mailbag. Make sure to subscribe to be a part of future mailbags. And we'll see you guys later as we get more Browns content out to the dog pound here at the Cleveland Browns Report. 